there's a lot of people with corn still to be planted in this area, myself included. Um, but there was also a lot of pretty early corn that went in this year uh, in kind of the last two weeks of April. Um, and that corn is up. So here's a bit of info about replants. Um, I very seldom recommend a corn replant and here's why. This table shows yield potential based on different planting dates and harvest populations. So in most cases, the yield potential of your earlier planted corn, even at super low populations, is going to be higher than the yield potential of your replanted corn when we get into the end of May or into the beginning of June. There's also additional costs associated with extra trips across the field, the potential for higher drying costs in the fall of your later planted corn, and more agronomic issues with later maturing corn like western bean cutworm feeding and pressure from leaf diseases like tar spot and northern corn leaf blight. More than likely, you won't be able to spot plant and you'll have to terminate the whole stand um, and do a complete replant. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. So you can use a herbicide depending on what trait your original corn was and what trait you're replanting to. Um, a quick example, like if you planted um, if you planted a double pro hybrid, a tricepta hybrid, or a VT4 pro hybrid, um, none of them are tolerant to glufosinate. So you could then go back with a smart sex or a smart sex pro um, and spray with glufosinate to terminate the original stand. There are a lot of different traits on the market nowadays, a lot of new traits uh, with different herbicide tolerances. So if you choose this route, please, please make sure you talk to the person who you're buying your seed from um, and talk to the person who you're buying your crop protection from to make sure that you're on the right track with herbicide tolerances of your trait and what active ingredients you're using. You can also terminate the original stand with tillage. Um, this can be pretty effective depending on what stage the corn is at. You'll likely need at least two passes to make sure that it's all gone whichever route you choose just make sure you're not in a situation where you have very many um or any plants from the original stand surviving um because then you can be in a situation with a lot of lodging pollination issues um variable moisture at harvest um it's just messy and it really doesn't work very well a more likely alternative is to replant to soybeans we're supposed to get a bunch of rain the next few days but you know, you could be in theory terminating your stand planting beans next week. So you're still in that last week of May. So the yield potential of that soybean crop is still pretty decent um, and lots of moisture in the ground to get it established. If you do switch from corn to soybeans, just make sure you're checking on the active ingredients of any herbicides you may have used on your corn already. Again, I suggest talking to whoever you're buying your crop protection from just to make sure you're not missing anything. If you do think you have corn that needs to be replanted and you're on 30 inch rows, just measure out 17 feet, five inches of row and count the number of plants, multiply it by a thousand to get the number of plants per acre. Take a look at the table I showed earlier to assess the yield potential of your existing stand versus what the yield potential of your replanted stand would be. You can also Google replant decision aid 1.8 to find the Ontario Corn Committee's replant decision tool. It's pretty handy for making these decisions. And of course, reach out to an agronomist like myself for help.